on Fifth and Maple. Think of regarding the angels' churches and go west. Well, this meeting is now being recorded. Okay. <laughs> this is the City of Manistee Housing Commission. Uh, monthly meeting Thursday, November 21st is now what 905? 908. 908. And I would like to call it to order. Roll call, please. Commissioner Walsh. Absent. Commissioner Pelton. Here. Commissioner Szymanski. Here. Commissioner Goodman. Is absent. President Fosdick. Here. Quorum is present. Are there any amendments to the agenda? Okay. Public comments on agenda related items. Consent agenda, approval of minutes, the annual regular meeting minutes for October 17th, and bills and disbursements for September of 2024. I move to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Old business. There being none, we will move to new business. Year three, Manistee County Housing Ready Program, Housing North, final invoice. $10,000. We can't, that was a signed contract, that's it, we gotta pay it. Did we get anything out of it? Yeah, um, when I was working on the five-year agency and the 2025 annual plan, I was able to get some good information regarding um, the need for housing in this area, so that was helpful. Um, so anytime we've reached out to the agency, they have been very helpful. And I think they do a good thing. You know, I think they do good stuff for the whole community. Well, seeing as though this was a three-year contract, do we have to make a resolution every year, or do we just... Well, it's done, isn't it? I think this is the final installment. So I don't know where they're going to go from there, but I think... Have to be we we haven't heard anything. If there's anybody about extending it or anything, no. So you need a motion on this, Lori? Yes, please. I'll make that motion. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Resolution 2024-15 yeah. health care option for 2025. So, see, I set this on here. We we didn't put this in the agenda, but this <coughs> here, this paper, mm -hmm. this paper, that's okay. relevant um, to this because Public Act 152 said you have three options on how to limit uh, or pay for health care in a public agency. One is um, an 80-20 split. One is hard caps, uh, and one is you opt out of health care, which we're not going to opt out, but some people that are self-insured, some entities, governmental entities have done that. So what this says is this is the maximum. So this paper that I put on your desk or put in front of you is the maximum that the Housing Commission can pay for an employee in a year. So there's a single, double, and a family. So $7,718.26 for 2025. That's the max we can pay for a single. So what we also put in there is the rates that um, our, our new health care rates, which we find that the unions got really good rates. So we we kept those when we searched around and thought we could find better rates. We couldn't. So, so basically the union is 480 plus 131 per single. And so that falls under the full hard cap. So Steve, what happens is anything over $7,718, the employee has to pay. So the hard cap is the most that the housing commission can pay. So when you go to a double- Well, which that's is for the year, right? For the year. Okay. So they they broke, you'd have to multiply that by 12, I'm sorry. You're right. They they do it annually. 7700 is what about? That's mom. Yeah, just over, just over. Yeah. yeah. So a single person actually doesn't does pay not anything. have to pay. We're under the hard caps. A copay or. A... Oh. Is this good insurance? 
yeah everybody's pretty happy with it we went okay. through we went blue it's still a blue cross policy because so i think it's to the medicare and that's a lot of money to pay for drug coverage when you're paying 15 30 45 dollar co-pays yes yeah and actually they only increased five percent versus many agencies experience anywhere between a five and 20 percent yeah we had 17 percent increase in blue cross and ever so now do we have um, an employee committee or whatever that looks at those health benefits occasionally and we reviewed this with the employees last year, see, and when we did our research, everybody circled back to we wanted to keep the union coverage because it it expired, and we thought we could find a better option, and we couldn't, we really couldn't, and it's and everybody was happy with the coverage, is my understanding. Yes, I did. Talk with People have like if their spouse has coverage, do they get one of those like, payment in lieu of? Yeah. 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 Right. Currently, nobody is. Um, Nobody's taking that. Okay. But it, it's available. Yes. Yeah. So I guess to circle back to the bottom line is we recommend that you adopt you you select the eighty or the hard cap option, so that the housing commission can only pay the seventy seven hundred and eighteen dollars for a single sixteen thousand one forty one for a double. And twenty one thousand forty nine for a family. That's the max the housing commission's liability would be. And the uh, uh, double and family are more than this combined. So the employees will make up that difference, and they are right now too. So this is no change. It's just a continuing. We and have I will this. renew the contract through the union. Yeah. They keep sending it to me, but I wanted to wait until after this meeting before I renewed it, and that, that will be effective February first. The new premiums. to pass resolution 2024-15 on the hard cap option. No second. Favor? Aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. Close. Motion carried. A DBG budget for 2025. So it's almost the same as last year. This is for three houses, the domestic violence houses that oh, we yeah. have, which is funded by a MISHTA grant. So that's why we have a separate budget for right. it. And we charge administrative costs to manage it. A very a hundred dollars a house per yeah. month. Um, the rents are lower that we're collecting than last year. So I have tried to work with the resident on obtaining a Section 8 voucher, um, but right now they're hard to get in this area. Why is rent lower? Because it's based on 30% of their adjusted gross income. So the, the residents' incomes have reduced from what they were last year. Is the resident on a waiting list for Section 8? Well, there's three residents. I mean, are they all? Um, to my knowledge, no. So, we but that is something that yeah. we can definitely try and I mean, I, I mean, I've encouraged them to do that. Um, a lot of our vouchers were taken up. And so we do have a lot less vouchers than we are legally <laughs> owed. But nobody's pursuing that. But anyway, I would say they, they're never going to get a voucher if they don't get on the waiting list. Correct. Yeah. Who admitted? So who administered? Lisa, you know. CAA and. Uh, who is that? Where are they out of? Traverse City? Traverse. A couple months ago, I got an email that all vouchers were put on um, all vouchers waiting. They closed the waiting list. They closed yeah. the waiting list. It is closed for the remainder of this year, most likely all of 25. Yeah. So well, my, my question is DBG is doesn't Mr. Subsidize that? No, they did up. They did up front, Steve. The grant, oh, they and they gave the us. Building. They gave us a uh, operating reserve. Okay. So what we did, it we had the same program at Big Rapids. So what we tried to do is to extend the life of the program. Um, we tried to 
help the residents find vouchers. Okay. So that increased our rent revenue, which means less that we had to take out of the operating reserve to cover operating costs. So it was just a financial, it was a, it was a smart business move to help the tenants find some assistance. And if we can find them in Section 8 vouchers like you know, it's fantastic for them because they can move anywhere in the That's, United States. Yeah, yeah, they're portable. Yeah, yeah, I can have Lisa actually bring them and meet with each of them and at least try and get them on any kind of a wait list. There is no wait list right there is now. None. There is okay. no wait list right now. However, so but we could go in the loop, so I will be not open that does. You know, Baldwin, Baldwin has vouchered. So what what's missing in this western side? Just so you know, I don't know if Traverse City has a. Do they have a program? I don't think Traverse City has a housing choice voucher program, the Housing Commission. Yeah. The housing Commission. Um, the housing choice vouchers are all handled by each county's HARA, which yep. happens to be NMCAA for Manistee and every county more. Yeah. Well, my where, where does Tip of the Mitt come into that? Tip of the Mitt is the administrator of those. Because a lot of times. HQS. Oh. Uh, Annual HQS. Um, anytime there's a change to the family structure, income. So they give the vouchers to the HARAs. They give the vouchers. The vouchers come from Mishta to Tip of the Mitt to the HARA. A lot of times I would call Teresa Kelly at Tip of the Mitt and she'd find one for me. Yeah. Well, Teresa was really good about that. But she she told me here this last summer that. There is nothing out there, and it doesn't look like in the foreseeable future there'll be anything. So, what's missing on this western side, Steve, is yeah. like around us, Everett has vouchers, Housing Commission, Cadillac has vouchers. In fact, that helped that. I got that program started. Um, Reed City has vouchers. I think Baldwin has a voucher program. So, we had access within their service radius, which, which is usually 30 miles, that we could bring vouchers from other housing commissions. We don't have that here. I mean, Cadillac would be the closest and they don't have, they don't come this far. I don't know how far Baldwin comes. Right, and I wonder if they would consider doing what you guys did or what Reed City and Big Rapids did where they gave them to them yeah. forever. Well, and we asked Reed City because they have a big voucher program, like 120, 119 vouchers. Yeah, it's over 100, I know. The challenge- yeah, their housing. Commission. Housing commission, yeah. Mm -hmm. So housing commissions can have a voucher program. So whenever we had one, uh, we have one. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, but we asked Reed City and Big Rapids to project base some of their vouchers into some of our tax credit units, and they did. Oh. So, so that's a that's an opportunity that we could look at too to see. But it's got to be, I think, within your service area. So I don't know. I don't know if, but, but something we could look. Well, at. we could build the building down there and. <laughs> And have our mail forwarded up here. <laughs> well, and with HUD approval and board approval, they may be able to go out of, you know, if it's only a few miles out of their jurisdiction. So that's something I can check in. Yeah. Well, I don't know if Not any, I don't point. think they're letting new entities. They What's happening mm -hmm. is some housing commissions are giving up their vouchers because like a small 20, 30 doesn't make financial sense to administer, they lose money doing it. So they they typically try to find another housing commission with an existing program to give them to. Yeah. Well, you have to have a voucher program. I have. So, but not to say, I got, I've got some thoughts about that later on. on okay. When you're giving an update. So do you need any action? Yeah, we should approve that budget. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the DDG budget for 2025. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Scatter site snow plowing proposal. So Kevin did reach out to as many local companies as he could to obtain additional quotes. Um, Larson Landscaping, their booked for the year. Um, Cooper Long Care that the lawns for us they do not come to manistee for snow plowing um we did get one additional quote from jason thompson landscaping but and so um the quote from lakeshore property um is still clearly the most reasonable option and then we did 
receive a reference on behalf of Lakeshore property from Just Green Lawn and Pest Control? Does Just Green have too much going on? They don't want it. Is that why they recommended Lakeshore? That would be my assumption. Kevin, well. Kevin was reaching out to everybody and this Just could green. only come up with yeah, one more quote. Probably, yeah, he's got a bunch of trucks. Um, okay, so not a lot of options. No. But this is just salt as needed, or this is, oh, this is snow removal and salt. Each time it's 605? No. So we're only going to salt when it's very icy. So they're not going to salt unless needed. Um, but the $310 would, would be actually to plow all, I think we have 30, what is it, 32 buildings? Yeah. That would actually be to plow all those up on snow removal. So it's not a bad price. No, and then it includes their driveways if they have them, or just the street area. This this is the driveways. Well, because some yeah. the county doesn't or the city doesn't plow some of those streets, right? No, I think they're all I think they do. Yeah, well, they, they do, do the ring. Yeah, they do a ring around. Yeah. Oh, they do even down yeah. like yeah. the inside. Okay. It, it's just the driveway plowing, no sidewalks. Yep. Right? Right. Yeah. Still decent. I uh I was talking to Nick yesterday, who was the owner of this Lakeshore Solutions or whatever. Ask him because he's my insurance agent too. And I said, at what point in time are you going to raise your hand and say, I give up, I'm doing too much? And he just said, <laughs> they just bought what 146 acres from the city. Yeah. No, no, not that much. But he said there was different parcels. Yeah, but. Um, they're the, are they still our cleaning crew here? Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's going better? Yes, and they've been helping us um, with unit prep as well. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So I think we try it. Yeah, I think I, it's good. I do. Uh, my recommendation to the board would be to try it. Well, we don't. <laughs> No, is it well, and we've budget? never and we've never plowed we've never the driveways. Plowed so this no, is the first time the housing commission will actually be plowing budget. the driveways. Yep. So I mean, it's so the residents are going to have to be educated as well. Like move your car, yeah, by a certain time of yeah. day or something. Does someone want to make a recommendation? Sounds like more work for Lori to me. <laughs> I guess we. Uh, Move to accept the bid from Lakeshore Solutions plowing. Years ago, we used to have a salt truck come out on the road and dump salt with a nail from the snow in the tree. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Lot of proposal for physical year end 2024. So that's in a separate yeah. your separate package. I think that was emailed right too. Yes. Yeah. It too. Yeah. That we were, did receive three, which was better than last year. We only received one. So Zach has done it for well. Cindy's been here, I believe, seven years, and she said that he's been doing it every year since she's been here. So we have not had a different auditor in over seven years. Sometimes it's good to have different eyes and stuff, especially it after would, everything that happened. It, it, it would be my recommendation that you consider Smith and Class Kevitz. Um, they're the middle price. They do a preponderance of audit housing commission audits. I saw that in the yeah. list. Um, I know them well. They're very good. Um, was zinc always, I need the word it's you, the most inexpensive? Well, last year he was the only proposal. He was the only, right. And you see who I reached out to. I reached out to the same people again. So we've only been through one audit here. So when we requested proposals, that is the one I do not know what prior, how many, if prior management went out for proposals or not. The same was who was used prior. Prior, yes. Many years. 
many if, years. If you remember when I came on board, we in April, we didn't have an auditor engaged yet. So we reached out to him and he was willing to do it. Remember? So. I would support um, having a different auditor this year. And I'm fine with the recommendation. He did good work too. There's no issue you know, with him. But just sometimes, I mean, after what we've experienced here, I don't think it'd hurt to have different eyes on yeah. on the numbers. And this is an annual proposal, correct? Yeah, for three years. Three so he, there was. So actually, there's two options you could choose: either the one year or the three year. What are you recommending? I would I would choose the option for the three year contract three -year. personally. That way, we don't have to go through this every. Uh, uh, can we have the um, audit? Given to the board at their May meeting, present, presented to the board. So well, if you look we in the proposal, let's see, do I have the proposal here? Well, there was a date in there. They yeah, have to have it completed yeah, by, I believe it was the so. end of May. So, yeah. no, it's not going to be available at the May meeting. Well, what I'm thinking is the main meeting, if we stick to the fourth or third Thursday of every month, we can then adopt or okay that um, and then give it to the city for the June 1 deadline. The city has a deadline that Zink has never had that audit done for. And that's my problem with Zink. Well, the the, the, well, the other issue too, Steve, is we have six months from the end of the fiscal year to submit it to the state. We have nine months from the end of the fiscal year to submit it to HUD. And we missed the state deadline over and over and over. We're on the, if you go in to the state database, we're on the list of late audits. I can I can share that with the auditors that we would like that, but I can't guarantee it because that's not what, when I requested a proposal. I believe they have to have it done by May 31st. Normal May. Yep. And then give it to the city for their June 1 deadline. Well, what we would do, Steve, is if if you um, approve whoever we choose, we will try to get it scheduled right away. Okay. So. Well, you know, and you know, we can we can have prior. They should be able to do that. I I don't know though. Um, well, but they, no, that's a great idea. I mean, they that, will. That would be they will. Great. I'm sure we, they if will. we can make it happen. Well, and the Smith and Klekovitz, Klekovitz, they're doing the Ann Arbor Housing Office, and that's got to be the largest in the state, or pretty close to it, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm impressed with Ann Arbor. Are you? Yeah. yeah. I watched at that meeting. Yeah. <laughs> but but still, if if they're if they're handling a, a I'm sure that they've got their act together because I don't think those people labor. And when, whenever I've been or had in businesses that had annual audits, the auditor came and presented the audit. They'll come and present it. Zink right. presented it. Oh, well, you weren't there coming, Zink. Zink came and presented the audit when he first got on the commission. Not this last year. Either. No, not this Well, he did when I. Okay. I don't think we asked him to, Steve. I think he okay. probably yeah, would have. He was there. Okay. Do I have a motion? Uh, I Yes, I'll I'll make, make that motion. Or I thought I started. And you did. I, I, yeah, I, she did start the motion. I said, I move we expect Smith and Cleck. Cleck That's Cleck yes. <laughs> to be our auditors for the next three years. Yeah, the yes. three year. Three year uh, contract. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We do, I don't think we have any presentations. Okay, reports and communications. Mark and Lori, you're up. All right, well, I'll I'll start it. Um, I've had some conversations with Baker Tilly. They're just about ready to finalize their report on three or four different options for repositioning. So, um, and one of them was a will be, and this is the um, reason I talked about a voucher program, one of them will be um, tenant protection vouchers, which means that we'll have to have an agency administer those if we choose that route. But then there's no, there's no, um, 
radius that you have to work with. And I, Brian called me because in Everett, we have a housing choice voucher program. So we could be one of the agencies that would could help or could be Reed City or Baldwin or whatever. We have some options there if we wanted to go that route. So just so you know, that'll be one of the, the um, issues. And then I had another conversation with a developer that you all know um, about about a potential project and only in the respect that um, under this QAP, the Qualified Allocation Plan from MISHTA, if we wouldn't qualify under the preservation category because it doesn't allow demolition. So I said, would that be a problem to do a tax credit deal with this RAD conversion? And the, the really the answer is, we think we can be really competitive in the open category. So just like we were in Everett, although we're not doing any demolition there, but with our bringing tenant um, project-based rental assistance into it, we get more, we get points just like we would on preservation. So the, the answer was we could still move forward on a project and do demolition. It just wouldn't be eligible under a preservation category. So that was good news. I was a little worried about that when I started reading the um, um, QAP. And the other thing I wanted to talk about, and Lori, I, don't know where we're at. We rescheduled a meeting with the city. Have we set a date? No. Yet? So um, they wanted it in. They wanted to do it in December, and I'm I'm on vacation for that week. We used, and I really like to be there. I think we're ready for that. No. Well, and I think when I talked with Bill Campbell here last week as to what we're going to discuss in closed session. Um, he seemed to think that it wasn't going to happen until January, February. Okay, I think that's better, pr frankly. Mm -hmm. Then we'll have Baker Tilly's recommendation, and then we have some thoughts about uh, options that we have. So right. I think that's good. Okay, I, I just we have to have time to absorb the recommendation. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree with you. Sir. Yeah. So, okay, that's all. So speaking of the city, um, we did. <clears throat> receive a phone call from one of the newly elected city council members, Liz Lasky, and she attended the resident council meeting yesterday. Exciting. And I took her on a tour of all the properties. So she was very pleased to um, see the, because uh, she used to come to Century Terrace when she was young for Bible study, younger days. Um, so she said it's been a lot of years since she's been in these buildings. Um, so yeah, she's very happy with what the Housing Commission's doing. She had all great things to say, and she said to reach out to her if there's anything that we need. Um, she is commissioner for this area. Yes. Yeah. She replaced Cindy Lunder. Yep. Yeah. So um, we did go through a MISHTA audit. Um, and a MISHTA inspection. For the tax credit for these two buildings. For the low income housing tax credit program. Um, during the inspection, um, the only thing that we are not in compliance with <clears throat> is we must have carbon monoxide detectors in the building. Even though we don't have gas fired equipment in every unit, it's a new ruling that you must have carbon monoxide detectors in every unit or a monitored carbon monoxide detector in the rooms where the gas powered um, equipment is. So I've reached out to Johnson Control for a quote to install four carbon monoxide detectors. Um, currently we already have a smoke detector in those in the, so it's the two laundry rooms and the two boiler rooms in each building so we already have a smoke detector in there so i've requested that they replace the smoke detector with a different base that has both carbon monoxide and fire um, protection so i'm still waiting for the proposal on that so we have 60 days to correct that but that was um the only only finding so oh, that's good. Yeah. So he was he was pleased. That shouldn't be terribly expensive. My ADT monoxide detector was hundred and fifty bucks. It it will be, Mick, only because it's a 
it's a proprietary system, so Johnson can build. It'll be a five hundred dollars smoke detector hooked sure. into their system. Yeah, and a thousand dollars to install. Yeah, it. so we can't just go to the no, no hardware. And no, not if it's not if it's part of the uh, the, the okay. panel system. We don't we don't touch any yeah, of that for liability yeah. reasons. I mean, mine is monitored with yep. ADP. Yeah, it's not uh, commercial. Yeah, I, I could go on if we could uh, take our system and. To an ADP. No. No. What we need to do, what we should have done, is put a non-proprietary system in. Not. I, I can go on a tangent about <laughs> elevator companies and fire alarm companies that have their equipment, their software. You can't touch it, <laughs> and the hourly rate to service things is ridiculous. So maybe this is something we should look at. In the well, yeah, yeah. If I would have been in on the spec, correct, it would have been all non proprietary that any electrician could have serviced that, that those systems exist. They're easy to install. But if you get if you go with one of the major companies, they're less. Equipment installation is less, but then the operating costs are way, way, way more. Uh, that's just something you learn along the way. <laughs> yeah, which we had two devices that went bad last week, two weeks ago. So Kevin called Johnson Control. They came. They replaced them. I received a thirteen hundred dollar bill. I just, no I just was able to get that. I just was able to get them to take seven hundred fifty dollars off that bill. So, and then I also told them I need to know what's on recall. Is this, you know, these are fairly new. Are we? Um, or though some of the devices that were on that recall, I received this letter saying that some of the equipment's recalled, but no one reached out to me telling me exactly what devices and if they're, you know, how I set up the replacement of this. So I have my salesperson working on that. And also um, he's working on the quote for these carbon monoxide detectors. Um, and he was able to reduce that bill by $750. So, so I am working closely with them because of the, because they are proprietary. I have to, I would have to go through them, so I'm trying to get them to, you know, work with us and and give us decent rates. But I would think they're virtually brand new. That if they were to go out in the first year or so, that but it's not the first year anymore. Yeah, but it's a smoke detector. My God, those things. Well, that's the same spiel I said. No, that ever happens. <laughs> that's to that's how I got them to take seven hundred fifty dollars off the bill. <laughs> I, I think we should look at replacing that in the next couple of years. That's a uh, non proprietary. Yeah. Which that's is brand new yeah. at Century Terrace. We spent a lot of money putting yeah. that system in. That, so you'd have to replace every single device, and there's a new, lot of devices. It'd be hundreds of thousands. Yeah. And we just replaced it. Yeah. So. Got to live with the bad decisions. Yeah. Now, this building, that could be an option yeah. because the the devices in unit are not monitored here in Harborview. It's only the hallways and the mechanical rooms. So why are we monitoring? Because, it, monitoring because that's the system that's there. We have to monitor. It's point to point monitoring. So we know every device is in the panel. That's monitored. That's what was done with the renovation. Yeah. Yes, and it may have been proposed, but taken out of the scope of work here. I'm not sure. But but we fall within the <laughs> within the scope of the law here by not monitoring. Why can we not monitor over there? Well, I think it's a it's good that we are monitoring. Yeah, I think it's a safety. Thing. And the and at the last meeting, if you recall. We actually are going to have the fire department will be dispatched anytime a smoke detector goes off in unit. Yeah. So that should be, I signed that contract, I sent it in. Um, they came and did the point to point. And within the next week or two, the fire department will start getting notified anytime a smoke detector is activated in unit. So that's the way, that's definitely, I think that's the way to go is, to have your system monitored, yeah, all your unit here. monitored if possible. I, I was surprised that it wasn't because I, you know, other places, but I, you know, working with the government, 
It was required that you have monitors. I was surprised to too that when I yeah that they yeah, are the building had to have a we do have hardwired. So each building and each unit in Harborview has a hardwired smoke detector and a um, battery backup. a battery backup smoke detector that's not hardwired. And we, um, don't, we don't know why we did. They didn't upgrade this here, but it is the common areas are monitored. So there yeah. is a panel that there is some monitoring going on, which is good. OK, but the rest of my report. But can ADT do it cheaper? Well, if we ever if we ever have enough funds to. Go out for proposals to replace the fire alarm system in this building, we could certainly look into you know, ADT, um, there's not a lot of companies out there that are not proprietary. We did find one in Big Rapids, I believe. Who did we? Uh, and ADT is what there's a assist equipment. I mean, yeah. I, I, all their equipment is proprietary. Yeah. yeah, there's some other there's okay. equipment okay, out there. Okay, well, let's just keep the yeah. back of our mind for later. Yeah. Okay. okay, so the rest of my report, um, the file audit, we have not heard the results of that yet, but I do have to say that the staff was amazing getting everything to the compliance auditor. Um, Lisa spent all day on Monday um, uploading files, so she did an amazing job getting them everything they needed. We we do not have the results, but I will have. I should have it by the next meeting to see how we did on the file audit. Is there anything in particular that that audit looks for? The compliance of the tax code. Just the, tax the qualifications code. of the residents living there. They have to meet the income. Which is what our partners. KMG's compliance. Yeah. Which is what our partners want right. to make sure. Yeah. Their partner, because the partners will be in big trouble yeah. if it doesn't comply. That's right. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then I have planned an upcoming vacation for the first week of December. I'm flying out on Thanksgiving Day to visit my daughter in Tucson, Arizona. And then I may take the following week. Uh, so the first week of December, I may not be here, but I can work from home. I love how you said that. I may. No, you will. Why don't you take a vacation? They can get along without you for a while. You're not going to be here for sleigh bell. I thought you'd be in the parade. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which I will be back by then, so I could come for that. Are you in the parade, Jenny? Uh, it's to be determined at this point. I don't know if I have the energy level this year for the parade. <laughs> but that's the end of my report. Okay. Mark, did you have anything? No. Nope. Uh, committee reports. I know the finance committee didn't meet. No. Nope. Um, Personnel did not meet. Okay. No. Nope. Makes that easy. Commissioner reports. Ginny, start with you. Love this uh, vacant unit list. I uh, can we have a ribbon cutting on 1717 Vine? <laughs> let's get the paper there. And That's probably a oh, good yeah. idea. Well, yesterday when I was there with Liz, Commissioner okay. Lasky, um, I told her that. When I the first week I started, when I was standing in that, I said the day that we actually have this unit filled is going to be a good day. Yeah, let's. And let's, I can't believe we're so close. I think yeah. let's let's have the paper come yeah. over and this is like, I mean, I don't know. Do we have the before pictures like when I went when I first started oh, yeah. the commission? What it looked like, mm -hmm. and I mean, because. That day when I toured that, and I'm like, and the refrigerator was still running. The lights were still on. Windows broken. Windows broken. Everything. No, not that unit. That was a different one. The lights, no. the water and the electricity and the gas have been shut off in that this 1717 for a long time. Matter of fact, they can't even find the the meter. What was the one that I said? <laughs> <laughs> can't find the meter. The city meter. So <laughs> yesterday when I was there, the plumber replaced out everything underneath and he and the city came. They're like, where's the meter? And there's, is we're this, not sure where the meter is. Is this a three bedroom? Four. Four. The, I'm sure. Not. Okay. Anyway, they were bad. Yeah. I mean, when I got out of the commission. You're talking about the right one. Yeah. yeah. When I got on the commission and went in there, I'm like, seriously? <laughs> okay. Maybe it was on then. Yeah. yeah. But it, yeah. But we and had. Then it got worse. Okay. Then it even got worse after that. But yeah, great. Let's have a. But yeah, we have the utilities have almost a, all back on again. We can have come the city good. officials there. We can have everybody we want. We'll bring donuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we should do. Show them. Let's show them. Okay, How many off. years has it been off? I want to say four. Yeah, at least four. At least four. Yeah, I thought it was I think years. it's longer than that because 
I think it had been off for a couple of years. I have the I got on the commission. Date in my file. I have the exact date. I think the previous administration Give me another uh, yeah. had on. four different units that were offline that, that oh. they just turned the juice off yeah. and it didn't fill. Yeah. No, they didn't turn the juice off. They left the juice on. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. I think that's exciting. I'm excited yeah. to see that and I'm excited to see. Is it fine? Um, right. You have, still have a little bit of a waiting list. For these coming ready in this month, we do. Yeah, good. Yeah. So people. So so we're virtually, even though it shows a couple vacant, they're just in the process of being refilled. Yeah. yeah. Not even a month. So so we have been and will continue to stay in the near future at least, one hundred percent full. Okay. Real close. Yeah. It's awesome. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks to staff and everybody. Anything else? That's it. Um. Nothing really to report. Okay. The only thing I have is right after the election, Ms. Lislaski called me and wanted to have lunch. So we had a discussion about where the Housing Commission is and that she was very, like you said, when you met her, very positive and upbeat. And she, I quelled a lot of rumors that she had heard around town. And and I also had a meeting with Mark and Lori and myself, Karen Goodman and Jeff, who our attorney over a Commonwealth thing, and we'll discuss that further. And I then uh, had a phone call with Bill. Gamble the city and I just updated him where we were at. But outside of that, um, that's about all that happened with me. Received communications. Okay, Finan vacancy report. Well, see the financial reports are there. That's I don't know if anybody has any questions, but it's um particularly the public housing scattered sites were in a good financial position. And there is, I think, still some transferring to be done with developer fees out back into Riverside, like we talked about, so. It's getting closer and closer and closer every month. Yeah, yeah, so financially, I think things are pretty good. Okay. Vacancy reports are really minimal. Yeah, yeah, so the two units that we have at Century Terrace are both ready. Um, CT520 is scheduled for lease next Wednesday. CT15, we almost had that filled this week, but then the resident was approved to purchase a home. So, wow, good for her. But um, Lisa's trying to get another application approved so we can get that one filled as well. That's a very nice unit. It's it's actually an ADA unit. It has a roll-in shower um, and it's on the ground level right next to the elevator. So, and it's, it has a harbor view. So that one's not going to be a problem to fill. Yeah. Um, we did get keys back on a, another public housing site, um, 105 Holly Court. So I do need to add that to the vacant unit list. Um, we received that back on, I believe, Monday afternoon. Um, that one is almost in the condition that um, the other units that you guys went in were in. So it's it's in very, very poor condition. So we are gonna get it back up and going though. Is it a two bedroom? It is a three bedroom and we already have, um, we, we're, pretty, we're pretty sure we already have it assigned. We're just waiting for the final screening of an application that was next on the wait list. Um, so we're pretty sure we have that one assigned. We still don't have 1717 assigned yet, um, but we are screening applicants for that as well. Um, so I'm hoping by January 1st to have both the public housing um, units filled and the two at Century Terrace, those will be filled um, within the next week or two. We did receive keys back yesterday on a um, Harbor View um, apartment, a resident who can no longer live alone, live independently, 
had to move out, but that one's already, we already have the application 90% approved. We're getting ready to send it to compliance. Um, so yeah, things are, are good. We're keeping the, the vacant unit list down. It's good. Newsletter. Everyone's seen it. You know, back it. Yeah. Now, um, Britain is doing this now. Yes. Doing an excellent job. Yes, she is. Okay, we come to public comments. Are there any public comments? You're the only public person in here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now I've asked the council to close the session. Make a, we need a motion to go into closed session. I'll make a motion that we go into closed session. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Yeah. That motion carried. Thank you. And that is the end of our meeting. Excuse ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> Are we still recording? Yes. We yeah. are. You just pause that right now. Yeah, let me get in there. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. We're, okay. resuming, we're resuming the regular meeting. Resuming the So you are, the meeting is being recorded again. What time is we it? We are resuming the normal meeting at um, 10 15. So at this point in time, I guess I would entertain a motion for adjournment. Can, before that, can I? Uh, oh, yeah. For on um, on the record that we want to maybe do something public for opening seventeen seventeen. Vine. Vine. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So maybe invite city people and the newspaper and whatever. Yeah, that's a great idea. Okay, I move to close the meeting. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, no pictures sorry. today, thank God, because I'm tired. Yeah. Um, oh, that was the other. Okay, thing. let me stop the recording here a minute.